Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. For those who have just joined with us, you're watching Towards the Origin in discussion with Sheikh Qazi Lutfur Rahman with our tonight's topic title, that is Mother-in-Law in Islam. Sheikh, before we went into the break, you touched upon a very sensitive issue about uh, the managerial aspect of the housing. Um, mm. Who is the, who is the manager? Who will, who will be responsible to run the house? Mm. Now, a common question that we encounter is: I think it's about understanding the role. I think it's that's where the main clashes are there. Exactly. So now. Even if a woman is working, or say for instance, a woman is working equally like men, mm -hmm. um, there is no harm working together with the mutual understanding and contributing towards the family. As we know, we live in a 21st century where everything is very expensive, so sometimes mm -hmm. it's very difficult for one side of the gender I don't to, mean to accommodate. Say, it. I, I, I've never mentioned, or I don't mean to say that, that women uh, are not allowed to work. Mm -hmm. I've never said that. But it's just the understanding, and it's 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 the it's the it's the um, mutual understanding between the couples. That's that's really important. That's good. Because as I said, when we are married Islamically, then then we have certain rights and responsibilities. Where and we it go goes wrong, both ways. Yeah. Where we go wrong is that sometimes we apply Islam, and the other time we apply the local or the or the cultures. Like it could be from back home or from, from local. It could be like or from the yeah, heritage culture, heritage the background culture. that we come from. Yes. So sometimes we apply the culture, and other times we apply Islam, and that's where we, as couples, sometimes we have a lot of misunderstanding and we have a lot of clashes. And now you did touch upon the word, the verses which says mm. qawwam, and you did touch upon the man should be the, uh, I mean, the way how the house should be run, mm -hmm. and then you did touch upon wa'amruhum shura baynam or wa shawirhum fil amr. Now, how much, I mean. When it comes to discussion, when it comes to taking suggestion or opinion, what should the procedure be? Meaning, every uh, the shura concept in Islam is that everyone sit down, they speak to one another, uh, they speak to each other, they consult, they, they seek um, uh, some time uh, opinion, uh, opinions, yeah. and then and then like uh, the manager makes the decision, just like any organization it works. So when we say many people, as I said, people misunderstood. Some people, some men, they took it in their favor and they used this as even to sometimes, uh, you know, put their spouses down, violence mm. and even domestic violence and so on, so so forth. But um, so men are the maintainers and protectors and the managers of their wives. And as I have mentioned earlier, it's not about uh, you know. The equality, the men and women are equal in the sight of Allah Almighty, but it is the responsibilities which distributed by Islam slightly differently based on the 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 the, the nature or the physical aspect of of a man and women. Um, but having said that, I mean there is a very good understanding behind it as well because when Allah says men are responsible for these things, that mm -hmm. means it is an indication that they will be accountable on the day of exactly. judgment. So Whereas a woman, mm -hmm. regardless of whether she contributes to the family or not, she yes. won't be held accountable yes. for that, contributing yes, to the family. Definitely. So so all of those things are again related to a Muslim male and female, Muslim uh, husband and wife. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about anybody else. Because when we are married under Sharia, under Islam, then we have certain roles and responsibilities. Unless we follow them, uh, we will fall into many, many problems and, and clashes. So going back to the uh, uh, the maintaining, financial maintenance, then in return, Allah the Almighty, He says that men's are the man or the husbands are the managers of the of the house um uh, uh, that uh, of course give a, a husband lots of responsibilities uh it, it, it puts him in in many many uh, uh different responsibilities now uh, another question may arise where uh, people many people uh, would say that do i have to follow my husband or uh, is this something important to uh or, you know obey the word obedience or the obey obedience of husband uh, in Islam. Now, uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he <laughs> mentioned in a hadith uh, in the book of Ibn Hibban uh, on the authority of Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, where he says that قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said إذا صلت المرء خمسها that if a, a woman prays five daily salah, وصامت شهرا and if she fasts in the month of Ramadan, وحصنت فرجها and if she took care of uh, her low impulses, uh, took care of her uh, uh, of herself, um, uh, and she was good and kind and obedient to her husband, then uh, uh, that enter 
into the heaven through whatever gate you wish to enter um, through. So that would be the choice that would be given to her. That's a very great status. Um, just to clarify that, we use the word obedient to husband. Does it mean that if the husband says something that is against the Quran and Sunnah, no. they still need to be now, followed? The, the obedience in Islam also has to be understood. It's not an absolute obedience. Rather, uh, the obedience according to the, f the guideline or the framework of Islam. So um, uh, there is a famous saying or, or prophetic statement uh, where it says, La li fi al hmm. which means that there is no any obedience of a creation in the disobedience of the Creator. So it is not allowed, permissible to obey any human being if it is going against the, uh, the will or, or against teachings the of Islam. teachings of Allah, His Creator, Allah, the Almighty. Um, so, so it's not an absolute obedience, rather the obedience which was given, which were given within the framework or the guidelines of Islam. Um, and even it says there are some of the prophetic statements where many people don't quote. And I, another reason for why I actually was interested to talk on this topic, I have seen the scholars in some parts of the world, especially in the Muslim world I've seen, they're always talking about the virtues of um, husbands, virtues of mother-in-laws uh, for a wife. But uh, in, in, in this part of the world, in, in some other parts of the world, scholars are always talking about the rights of the wives and quite neglectful towards the rights of the family of husband. I have seen Is it because the, law we live, the, car, the, the place that we live in, because are, there's a lot of said, laws are, and rights? People are uh, naturally influenced by the culture and custom and tradition of the society where they live. So it is possible. Um, but we need to understand even the uh, um, recommended fasting, oh sorry, optional fasting, it is not allowed uh, for a woman uh, if her husband doesn't want to. So there is a saying of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is not permitted for a woman to fast while her husband is in front of, uh, in, uh, while her husband is present. Illa um, bi unless uh, there is a consent of husband that you know, she can fast. Mutual understanding. Mutual understanding, yes. absolutely right, yeah. Um, now, you can see that uh, as, as a husband is responsible of his wife and his children, but is he responsible for his parents? Because sometimes this is one of the very important mm. aspects here. It is we, I mean, especially from a husband's perspective, he sometimes finds it very difficult to juggle between his mother and he's his in wife. The battle. And he's a the constant battle, battle yeah. because he knows one aspect that the mother is the key to the Jannah. Yep. And the other aspect is he loves so lit and so dearly to his wife, yeah. who is the mother of his yeah. children. Yes. Now, sometimes, especially in this part of the world that we live in, we have. We have to obviously not only follow the Islam, at the same time Islam tells us also to follow the rule of the land as well. Yeah. Now, he's, he's in a constant battle. Absolutely now, right. what does he do then? So, um, I, I normally sometimes, like, you know, uh, I can see some of the husbands, uh, especially those youngsters those who are getting married. Sometimes they, um, uh, they incline, they're inclined towards their mothers and parents. Correct. And they kind of... They cannot balance it out between wife and husband. And other times, you find that they're inclined to their wives, and they're they they're not quite dutiful and responsible to their parents. I mean, let's put it a picture here. Sometime a mother notices the daughter-in-law just came in yesterday, and now she has somehow taken away from my son. That is the concept. And then the other way it is. Yeah. I have married this husband, and yeah. he always listens to his mother. His mother. Now this yeah. is a very big, big battle. Battle. And and a husband is actually in a very critical situation but that's that's the reason why I want to actually mention and I would like to uh, uh, I'd like to say you know the the amount of responsibilities of a husband so after he's being responsible financially in Islam we're talking about we're talking from Islamic perspective that he's being responsible financially and looking after and taking care of his family as wife and children but also he's responsible for his parents so um, uh, there is a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu where he says, al jannatu um, tahta aqdam al -umhat. The paradise, as you've mentioned earlier, the paradise is through the feet of uh, a child's mother. Obviously, that include, uh, the, that include son and daughter. But it says in Masu'a al-Faqiyah, in the Encyclopedia of Fiqh, uh, which was uh, issued in Kuwait, where it says, أَمَّا خِدْمَةُ الْوَلَدْ لِوَالِدِهِ أَوْ الْأَبْ 
لولده فجائز بلا خلاف بل إن ذلك من البر المأمور به شرعا ويكون واجبا على الولد خدمة أو إخدام والده عند الحاجة So it says in the موسوعه الفقهية in this fiqhi or the uh, encyclopedia of Islamic law uh, uh, printed or published in Kuwait uh, it says that it is recommended highly for a, child, for a son um, to, to serve and to take care and to please his parents. But if, their par if, if his parents are in need of help, then it becomes wajib, it becomes compulsory for a son to take care and to, uh, to look after and to please and to serve his parents. So it becomes, uh, it becomes a, a wajib according to the scholars of, of fiqh. Whereas this wajib actually it doesn't uh, it's not for a daughter because when a daughter married Islamically speaking when a daughter is married she is more occupied with her husband so therefore Islam doesn't say uh, that when there is sons and daughters Islam say the sons are more responsible responsible for their parents in other words they will be more accountable accountable as well, as well yeah. yeah more accountable as well as responsible for their parents so, and that's the reason why we see that a son will would, uh, would look after his parents maybe uh, throughout the whole life uh, 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 but sometimes the other way around is the saddest thing we also realize they just forget their parents yeah, that's and now even in our the country of origin we do notice a lot of documentaries are being produced that mm -hmm. unfortunately in a muslim land our parents are left in old age home no that's unfortunate very and unfortunate. it is sometimes very disappointing to see such things very to be actually taking place within yes. our society that advocate so strongly about our role and responsibility towards our parents unfortunately yes that is right so um uh, uh, according to the scholars of islam a son is, is again responsible to please and to serve and to maintain the uh, the, the uh, maintain his parents um now would that be possible for a husband to do all those things without assistance and help of his wife, um, knowing the fact that um, she is she has responsibilities towards her husband, and her husband is responsible for his parents. So now you can see this responsibility is kind of indirect. Um, so I would say it's quite impossible for a husband to maintain all those things without the assistance of his lifelong partner, spouse, and closest person in his life, his wife. And at the same time, I would say, a wife, um, she cannot uh, fulfill the responsibilities of her parents and for, uh, of her brother-in-laws, sorry, of her brothers and, and sisters and relatives without the proper help of a husband. It's, it's quite difficult. So without the cooperation of husband, a wife cannot maintain her relationship with her family members and at the same time a husband he cannot maintain his relationship with his family members um, especially his parents without the help and assistance of uh, from his wife um, this is something that need to be really uh, understood um, properly um, now rel relationship relationship um, of of uh, a relationship with kins or relative uh, relationship of kinship is very important in Islam. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in a hadith, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhiri fal yukrim dayfahu." Whoever uh, believes in Allah and in the in the in the hereafter, then he must honor his guest. He must be uh, uh, hospitable and he must um, be kind to his guest. "Wa man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhiri fal yasil rahimahu." And who, if anyone believes in Allah and in the hereafter, then he should maintain the relationship of kinship. Now so the, the relatives who are connected through blood, uh, the, the re relative of kinships are very, very important in Islam. Now that's where I, I wanted to touch upon. Now when we say relative, sometimes the understanding of it is only blood relationship. Mm -hmm. Because relative can also be once a person get married, the yep. new family is also, can they not be classified as part of the relative? Um, relative, as I said, like again, uh, not through the blood connection, but becomes very close and, and as I said, interconnected responsibilities. Um, so uh, it is impossible to maintain this relationship of kinship because a mother and father of a husband is the closest person of, of the husband. 
And he cannot maintain that relationship of kinship, which is a fard, compulsory, as I said, without the assistance of a wife. And believe me also, a wife cannot maintain a good relationship with her family members without assistance and help of her husband. It will be like bitter. It, will be, it may go ahead, but it will be really rough. And it will, it will, there will be some sort of distance that will be noticeable. Be like, yeah, yeah, always there will be some problems. But it will be smooth and the way Islam, the way Islam requires. So that relationship of kinship is highly important in Islam. Silatul Rahim. Or in Bangla, normally people say Sila Rahim. Silatul Rahim is highly important and is taken seriously in Islam. Uh, there was also a famous story mentioned in the hadith that how a son was punished because he didn't listen to his parents. I don't mean to say listening to parents uh, in everything because a husband, again, in the middle, in, in the middle and he, he must be fair and he must balance, the, balance everything out. Um, this, this is something important. But a, a son is, is, is obliged to listen to his parents as well in Islam. So there is a hadith of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Bukhari, Sahih in Bukhari, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Nadat imra'a ibnaha, a woman she called her son. Mm-hmm. A woman she called her son. وَهُوَ فِي صَوْمَعَةٍ قَالَتْ يَجُرَيْجِ And he was praying in his private, sang, uh, 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 private room where he would worship Allah the Almighty, like a spe- specific room, um, uh, sanctuary room for only prayers in Sawma'a. So the mother said, Ya Juraj. She called him, Oh Juraj. Qala Allahumma ummi wa salati. He said, Oh Allah, I'm praying and my mother's calling me. Qala Ya Juraj. The mother called again, said, Oh Juraj. Then he said again, Allahumma ummi wa salati. Oh Allah, you know, my mother's calling me and I'm in prayer. Qala Ya Juraj. Third time, mother called, Allahumma ummi wa salati. He said the same thing. Um, Qalat Allahumma la yamutu Juraj hatta yanzura. في وجه الميامس ميامس. Then a mother said, Oh Allah, let the Juraj, um, uh, you know, let the Juraj, Juraj doesn't die until she, he goes through a, a trial, uh, uh, you know, a trial through a, a woman, um, a, a fitna basically. فقيل لها وكان التوي إلى صومعة راعية ترعى الغنم. And in around that private room where this Juraid used to worship, a woman, she came, she used to come, and she used to look after her animals. She was a shepherd, a woman shepherd. فَوَلَدَتْ فَقِيلَ لَهَا مِمَّنْ هَذَا الْوَلَدْ And then she gave birth to a son, a child. Uh, then she was asked, where did you, from where you got this child? Then she said, she, she accused Juraid. She said, it came from Juraid. نَزَلَ مِنْ It came from the from the worship, uh, 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 the, the prayer room or the worship room of Juraj. قَالَ جُرَيْجْ أَيْنَ هَذِهِ الَّتِي تَزْعُمُ Then Juraj was shocked and he was surprised uh, that, you know, how a, a, a woman is accusing him of, uh, uh, you know, uh, having a child with her. قَالَ جُرَيْجْ أَيْنَ هَذِهِ الَّتِي تَزْعُمُ أَنَّ وَلَدَهَا لِي قَالَ يَا بَابُوسْ مَنْ أَبُوكَ قَالَ رَاعِ الْغَنَمْ Then he asked the child when he grew up that, you know, who is your father? Then the child himself said that the shepherd, the male shepherd, is my father. So you can see because of the disobedience or not listening, the call of his mother, uh, he uh, really, uh, she, she gave, uh, she, she kind of made a dua, which was against the son, and that literally and, and practically affected the son. So that shows mother and father have a high status in, in Islam, and in general, a person can be affected. So you can understand a son is responsible and he needs to also maintain the responsibilities towards his parents. Um, and so it is difficult for him to do again without the assistance of his wife. So basically a mutual understanding, a fairness, mm-hmm. just, and I think a balanced way needs to be observed in order to achieve the bigger Absol- goal. Absolutely right. And also a family is a team. And a team uh, cannot work without the cooperation of each other. So we cannot just say bluntly that I have no responsibility towards your parents. I have nothing to do with them. No, this husband that you have, you know, his parents, his mother and his father was the cause to, to bring him to this world. Correct. At the same time, this wife that you have, you know, her mother and her father was the cause of bringing 
you know, ha ha into existence in this world. Obviously, it's Allah's hukum, but still it's the responsibility. I mean, a cause is parents. So a family is nothing but a teamwork. And yeah. Now, just to, uh, because obviously I'm just slightly concerned about our time as well. We're just running out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to touch on the main aspect of it. What is What reason have you identified or what reason do you think that is the main reason that clashes between a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law? Um, as you said, first of all, like, you know, it is the power issue that you've mentioned. So everybody wants to influence the son because son is, is, uh, is the uh, person who brings the earning and mostly... In most culturally, cases, I mean, culturally, from a cultural in, perspective. In most cases, saying, yes, yeah. yeah, in most cases, culturally or in, 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 in the Eastern world, you can find. Um, so therefore, uh, a mother, she wants to always make sure that her son is, is under her maybe control. Maybe not all, but some. But at the same time, some of the wives, they want to make sure that uh, husband is also, uh, you know, uh, absolutely with her. Um, so um, this, this power issue, is, is, it plays a big role. Um, also, lack of understanding about the concept of Ihsan. What is Ihsan? Ihsan is, uh, it has more than one meaning, but Ihsan also means that compromising loving and love and affection. So uh, people do not have ihsan. Ihsan means that you do more than someone deserves. So I do more than what you deserve and you do for me more than what I deserve. And that is the concept of ihsan. And ihsan has a very important uh, maqam in our religion. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, you know, it's, uh, a muhsin is the highest degree or highest uh, uh, Muslim, a believer, who is a muhsin. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsinin. So we don't see the ihsan. Um, in, in many, many people. Um, so uh, there is a hadith uh, in Muslim, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, Man istata'a minkum an yanfa'a akhahu fal yaf'al. That if anyone can help and assist and uh, 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 cooperate with uh, his fellow brother and sister, then he must do it. And in another hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, whoever in the assistance of his uh, brother, uh, fellow brother and sister, then Allah will be in his assistance. Now, family come first. So my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, uh, be, uh, uh, you know, for, for a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law, you know, the family come first. The assistance, the cooperation that's mentioned in hadith, that where well, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, that uh, if, a, if a person is in the assistance, or if a person is helping his fellow brother and sister, then Allah will help his, uh, 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 Allah will be in a constant assistance of him <coughs> or her. So the family come first. And also there's another issue that I have uh, seen. Um, when we look at human beings, we have two uh, aspects in our, in our body. One is, the first one is the physical aspect. The other, other aspect is the spiritual aspect. Now there are lots of diseases that actually are in our hearts and they kill us and they eat us alive, such as the jealousy. Jealousy is one of the greatest problems which cause this, this fight and this problem between um, a husband, uh, sorry, between a mother-in-law and, 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 uh, and daughter-in-law. So uh, jealousy can be a big uh, problem. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Al-Hasadu ya'kul al-Hasanat kama ta'kul al-Nar al-Hatab. And the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that the jealousy destroys the good deeds Jealousy destroys the hasanat, just the way uh, the fire, extra fire eats and destroys the wood. So jealousy is another problem that, that needs to be treated and removed from the hearts of the people. So when, the pe when people have a sound heart, then you see people are cooperating, loving one another, respecting one another, and the problems wouldn't maybe fully, fully uh, go, but will be much more reduced when people have a sound hearts. And I think this is very important to work uh, for every one of us. We have to work on the soundness of our hearts when we remove the jealousy, anger, frustration, uh, the, the show off, ego, all the superiority ones, complex. Yes, superiority, the power, uh, you know, love for the, for the leadership, love for the power. All those things can be treated through the purification of the hearts. And I think that needs to be done for everyone, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, and even um, a daughter-in-law, 
and father-in-law for everybody so they can have a better and peaceful family and just one last thing that we have to remove from our minds that when we marry our son that a, a, a wife she's coming as a merely as a worker or as a, a, an assistant that need to be removed but yes at the same time wife has son and daughter-in-law has responsibilities which is not denied but we have to remove that understanding but at the same time and I'd treat like them to, as if that's their own yeah, children own daughters and own children and at the same time I'd like to request our sisters to remove that mentality that there's nothing that I have to do for my uh, parents-in-law or mother-in-law or, fa or father-in-law as the responsibilities are interconnected and they're complicated and profound Jazakallah khair for this wonderful discussion. I had a lot of more questions to ask, but obviously the time always restricts us. But thank you very much for sharing your valuable I hope knowledge. I managed to pass the message. I know uh, it w the time was limited and I probably couldn't But inshallah in future, fe future episodes we'll be discussing more and finding out more surely, about the different roles and responsibilities. Surely, inshallah, inshallah. My dear viewers, with this we have come to the conclusion of our today's program. One thing we have clearly identified from this program, that is our discussion from today's from today's discussion is men and women are equal. They are not identical, but Islam treats men and women equally. It's the limited or lack of our understanding that creates a lot of problems within the society that we have today. Because we all know what is the difference in the sight of Allah is the taqwa, it's the piety, it's the righteousness. So men and women are equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other term that we have used in this episode is sharia, that the word that the whole people are very scared of. The Sharia, if understood correctly, in the true context, in the light of Islam, removing the barrier that we have, the, the negative knowledge or understanding that we have, and then with an open eye, if we understand the Sharia in its true concept, we will see that the Islam is always and is there for the betterment of the society. And finally, this is not aimed at any particular agenda. We have tried to discuss a particular issue, a particular subject that is relevant, that is prevalent in our society, and in no way we are trying to, we are trying to minimize or we are trying to degrade either the mother or the daughter because both of them have got their roles and responsibility but might be different and in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the righteousness, is the responsibility how much they fulfill. Thank you very much for being for watching the program and inshallah we will see you again in another episode with a new topic but same day and same time. Till we meet again, subhanakallahumma wa hamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfuraka wa tubilaik wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.